Henschel HS-293 was a radio-controlled glide bomb primarily intended for use against ships. The HS-293 was the world's first guided missile to be effective in combat. Today we would call this type of weapon a standoff missile, and with around 30 hits on Allied shipping with several sinking, the HS-293 was the world's most successful anti-ship missile until the French Exocet developed three decades later. Based around a 500 kilogram airdrop bomb, the weapon was manually guided into the target by sight using the target cover method. This dictates that the missile must remain in the line of sight of the controlling bombardier so that he can keep the missile superimposed on the target. Here the HS-293 is dropped from a carrier aircraft, a Heinkel HE-111. After a second or two of free fall, the missile gets clear of the aircraft and begins to drop behind. A small liquid fuel rocket engine ignites and burns for 10 seconds, propelling the glide bomb to about 900 kilometers per hour, around 370 to 400 kilometers per hour faster than the Heinkel. The missile must be ahead of the control plane and between the bombardier and the target. A test target the size of a small ship has been set up in the Friesendorfer marshes just northwest of Peenemünde. The test is 100% successful. Yeah, what you see here. The HS-293 radio-controlled rocket-boosted glide bomb could be carried under a range of Luftwaffe aircraft. As an anti-ship missile, it lacked the penetrating power to be effective against ships with heavy armor. But it was effective against merchant ships and smaller Navy support vessels. As a method of bombing Allied shipping, the HS-293 was much safer for the attacking aircraft than conventional dropped ordnance, as at no point was it required to be above the target or approach it directly. It was safer and even more accurate than a torpedo attack. Again, the attacking aircraft was not required to make a direct approach to the target, thereby increasing its vulnerability. With the glide bomb, the attacking aircraft could stand off a safe distance, staying out of range of the defender's guns for the complete attack manoeuvre. Dieter points out that the glide bomb could be used to attack shipping from a range of about 3.5 kilometres to around 18, about 2 to 11 miles, and from an altitude from 200 to 4,000 metres, so about 600 to 12,000 feet, so operationally a very flexible weapon. The missile was powered by a small Valter rocket engine, delivering a thrust of around 600 kilograms or 1300 pounds, and was mounted in a pod underneath the main body. Presented here are the principal components of the Fugit 230 radio receiver and guidance control system on board the missile. This is the receiver unit. We can see the P2000 pentode valves here and two Siemens telegraph relays to switch the directional control surface servos. And on the other side, another row of P2000 valves. And, um, this is the unit with the two plugs facing the camera is essentially a filter system that discriminates the important control signals from the total signal received. This is the distribution system that everything else connects to. A small motor generator or umformer here. The stabilization gyro is seen here. This gyro keeps the wings level and is vital to the control stability of the missile. DETA demonstrates the gimbal release mechanism automatically activated at launch. The missile has no rudder on the ventral stabilizer, so left and right steering is accomplished by ailerons on the trailing edge of the main wings. The gyro stabilizes the missile and restricts any tendency to roll by positively restricting the bank angle and restoring level flight after an aileron movement command is executed. And here is the uh, 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 special motor for, for, for 500 hertz and so on. And also was here... The device on the back wall here labelled Hohen Rudder Machine is an important mechanism that simplifies the remote control of the missile's elevator controlling the altitude. Because the velocity of the missile can vary on its trajectory from the launch point to target, decelerating by as much as 600 kilometers per hour, the missile has a dynamic pressure airspeed measurement system that controls a motor generator or TACO Dynamo as it was called.
so that the strength of the elevator's control signal, and thereby the elevator's angle of attack, is varied in proportion to the airspeed. Simply put, when the missile is going fast, the elevator deflection angles are small, but when the missile has slowed, typically at the end of the run near the target, the elevator deflection angles will be larger, so that the remote pilot is able to maintain a consistent feel for the behavior of the missile in flight, making the remote missile more responsive and more consistent in flight control. We can see the connection for the elevator push-pull rod here. Though all production HS-293As used in combat employed an aileron left-right steering control, an experimental version of the HS-293 used spoilers to simplify the control system. The spoiler mechanism was hidden in the wing and was flush with the wing surface when not operating. Dieter demonstrates the method when, of operation. When it goes so, when, when it makes plenty, go right, when it goes slowly, go left, and so on. A similar spoiler system was used on the Fritz X. The avionics equipment was attached to both sides of a mounting plate in the control compartment of the missile, situated just behind the payload. The antennas for the Fugi 230 control system were mounted at the tips of the glide bomb's horizontal stabilizer. The bomb, we have seen everything, but what is in the aircraft? In the aircraft is this system, this is transmitter, transmitter and the antennas to send the signals to the flying bomb. The circuitry you see here, a simple circuitry, you see here, this is the, the antenna, the an antenna matching, this is the, um, the, the power supply, this is a, a transmitter, this is a, a, a Zeitgeber, we say in German, and the reason was this. The Zeitgeber, or timer, allows the transmitter to run at reduced power while the missile is near the carrier aircraft. Too much transmitter power could overwhelm the receiver and cause problems. The timer allowed a delay of up to six seconds before full power was restored as the missile began to increase its range from the control transmitter. The frequency of the transmitter was very precisely controlled by a quartz oscillator. This location of the quartz crystal was equipped with an explosive pellet, so that in the event of a crash, or another situation where the aircraft may fall into the hands of the enemy, the quartz crystal could be destroyed to keep the control frequency a secret. Now, here we see the, uh, the bombing man who is steering the bomb by eyes with this joystick. Yeah? And uh, what, what, he, what he has to do there? For this I have to, uh, to uh, open the machine. Yeah? This machine is turning. Yeah? And you can see what, what, he, is, what he makes. When he makes so, this is a rudder for a high up in the sky and down in the water. Yeah? So the steering is working. Yeah? Down, high, <laughs> and here left and right. Yeah? So was the steering. And how, how was done this? The HS-293 uses a pulse mode control system. The noisy mechanical nature of the joystick surprises some. Are two wheels. But the simple motor-driven system allows the control switch gear in the box to generate a unique pulse time pattern that's transmitted to the bomb and translated into control surface positions. The fundamental frequency, about 25 hertz, is fixed. Only the pulse lengths vary depending on the joystick positions. I hope you can see this, yeah? Okay. What you see more on this uh, bombing man uh, position here? Maybe because you can here see, this is the control for the 24 volts, the control for the 210 volts for the uh, pentodes anode tension. Here you see the high frequency, high frequency power. Here we see what is selected. We have two types of fire bomb. Was einmal Fritz X for this the X, or the Hanschel for this the H. Yeah, this is selected so. Here you can select the four bombs was possible uh, on, to, to 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 carry from the uh, from the uh, aircraft. So you have to 
select, yeah. And uh, what more? Here you here you have to, uh, to, to see the temperature uh, in, in the bomb, left, right, medium, one, me, medium, uh, uh, one. So, and uh, with this, uh, with this uh, switch, you can select the uh, thermometers, yeah? And with this, you can make a fackle. What is a fackle? A, a light on the, on the backlight. You can make a backlight. It was a flare, in fact, wasn't it? On the a flare, yeah, back, yeah, backlight, yeah. So, that you can better watch the bomb when it's dusty and it's dark and so on, that you can see where is, where is the bomb to, yeah, you can better see, the, see, see it. But when you will start this bomb, yeah, you see, now we'll start, you press here, yeah, and the bomb leaves the uh, carrying aircraft. The socket connector Dieter is showing us here is the umbilical connection from the missile to the carrier aircraft. This socket is on the missile. We've seen the steering by radio, but Dieter points out that concern about British and American electronic countermeasures led to the development of a wire-guided system. Up to four reels of thin wire could be used for a maximum range of 30 kilometers, or just short of 20 miles. The long wire had a high electrical resistance, so the system had a special 200 volt power supply. This was the, we told to this Drahtlenkung, uh, steering by wire, but later was also a steering by television. So it was in the, in the bomb in front, um, a camera, television camera, and you can watch this on this screen. Yeah, that, that was the last, uh, but this with the, with, the, um, with the television was not okay and uh, was never in, uh, in action. Just before we end, we're going to show you an extraordinary and rare piece of film. Captured in 1944, using a cine camera set up to record the CRT display, like the one in the picture, in the carrier aircraft used to launch and control an experimental HS-293D. The view we see is from on board the missile as it glides at about 350 kilometers per hour towards a test target of what are probably disused barges anchored off the coast between Usedom and Lubmin. Boom. That's it for us. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more German Valvera avionics. Until next time, bye for now.